we have a number 10 in Munster now who's come from up the road. Um, so I presume, one, you're very much in favour of that decision, given you were calling for it in Madigan's day. And then um, give us your thoughts on where Carberry is, because Munster fans are feeling very excited about life right now, I would think. Uh, I think with good reason, too. I, I think he's still a bit to go. I thought last weekend in Gloucester, I thought Munster were phenomenal, I have to say. I thought it was the most complete Munster performance probably for the best part of a decade since David, uh, th that team of that era when right. winning silverware. Um, I, I think Joe is still lear learning in terms of controlling a game. He's not a Rod yet, and he can't become one until he gets the experience and the game time. But he's getting that, and without doubt, he's the, I mean, there's five out-halves here at the moment. I see Ian Keatley is uh, declared today. He's going away now during the summer, so yeah. that reduced it by one, and Tyler Blaine now seems to be suffering a little bit with, with injuries still. Um, but without doubt, Joey is the number one. I, I, I just love his style of play. He's, um, he's just got all the bits and pieces. Um, and he's one of those players, and this was the problem Joe had, that you, you just don't want him on the sideline. I mean, you would have been the same, Eddie, if you had been coaching him. You yeah. just, like, it's so, it'd be so frustrating for the player and for the coach as well to not to have him on the field. Mm. Um, I think he gives you something else as well, and, we, and we've seen it with Munster. Um, who came on at, at 10 last week? Was it Blendall? and then he moved further out again. And I think that's a lovely option to have, that you can do that with Joey in mm. a game, you know, that you can put him further out, whether it's full back, wing, whatever, and involve him in the game, because he's I, a beautiful broker. If I could say, yeah. Joe, I, I think Tony's first point is really important. Like, becoming an international world-class fly-half, as Carberry has that in front of him, it's a journey. And the danger at times, like, he's made incremental improvements, and I think Munster has been a huge part of that. I mean, I got shot. 18 months ago for saying he should leave Leinster. I mean, it was the autumn of 2016 or 17, I think I said, he should leave Leinster because he's not going to get any better behind Johnny Sexton. There was a, a lot of people disagree with that, but I felt like you have to play. Mm. You have to play under pressure. Um, now, he's, he's making improvement, but the problem that uh, happens with young players is they have a good performance, and then we, we rocket the expectation up around them, and we think, oh, they've arrived. And Tony said, made the point that Joey Carberry is learning his trade, he's finding his way, he, he may not have a great game the next week, but he learn from it. So people aren't that patient. They expect the same performance again. We go, he's on a journey as a fly half. They've all been on journeys. Johnny Sexton's on a journey. Roger's on a journey. They all had to find their way. Mm. And we, because the exposure now is we get impatient about getting them there, and we sh should be more patient with these guys. And like he got a lot of, he got a lot of flack after the Castor game. He missed a few kicks. But he came back, he bounced back, he hasn't missed a kick since. Yeah. But that's part of making him who he's going to be. Absolutely. And we have to keep that in mind with these young guys. Roger will always say it, it, was, the, it was the most difficult, um, you know, in terms of mental, the most difficult position in terms of your mental um, side of things and, and, and being able to control a game, you know, something going wrong for you, then something going right for you, you know, being able to be more that more consistency, as, as, as Eddie said, having that consistency to, to, I suppose, to brush it off and, and, and to learn those lessons and, and maybe not make those mistakes again, but the, the mental side of it is, is, is really tough in terms of being under pressure and having, having to make decisions. Now, he's, he's in a great position there. We've got Conor Murray inside him, yeah. Rory Scannell outside him, you know, who's almost like a, a second out half there. So um, the guys who can control the game as well a bit. But yeah, um, yeah for me, I think, you know, he, he, when, when, he, when I heard he was coming, I said, geez, he's going to be, you know, obviously making these line breaks. And he's going to be brilliant. Were you, were you delighted he was coming or did you, did you think, oh, I don't, you know, are we tearing away at the fabric of what Irish provincial rugby is built on? Not at all, no. She's welcomed him with, with open okay. arms. Um, no, I think it was, it was a brilliant signing and, you know, I, I was hoping against hope because I know there was a lot of talk, but, you know, um, it seemed to happen quite quickly then after that. Um, but, uh, yeah, look, it's, I just... It was kind of relishing the thought of him right. himself and Connor, you know, uh, playing together, and, and uh, with the likes of of, of, of Byrne coming as well too. I mean, I thought it was going to be a massive, I suppose, shot in the arm for Munster, which is mm. which has turned out to be. But um, yeah, I think he's he's uh, he's actually even I know he has a bit to go, is uh, but uh, in terms of of where he is this season, what I've seen in terms of controlling the game. Um, I've been really pleased, you know, he's some beautiful you know, shots into the corner, you know, Roger-esque, you know, kind of kicks, and um, that's a very important thing, obviously, keep those forwards So let's, let's, forward. let's tease apart controlling a the game then, because when Tony mentioned controlling the game, I must say the first thing, I mean, the, the default thing an Irish rugby fan thinks of is a Raj spiral kick to the corner. That is what we understand controlling the game as in some ways. Can you give us your sense of what you mean, Tony, when you watch Carberry? and you're talking about him controlling the game. Like, what is Sexton doing, or what did Rog do that Carberry eventually will get to, but needs to get to? 
Well, that obviously pinging the corners yeah. is the, the clear one you're talking about. I, I, you know, it's choosing the right club at the right time in the game and the type of kick that you're going to use. I think he's getting that. And I think another advantage, I accept what David said about, you know, he's learning uh, the need to concentrate. But at 10, I, I think a big advantage in that position above all, you're constantly involved. So if you make a mistake, you don't have time to think about it. I do think that's one advantage. Right. In, in playing the position. You can't dwell on a mistake. Um, but uh, but I, I, you know, I, I used to say about Eric Elwood when he came on the scene. Um, when Eric went, came onto the pitch, he had a real physical presence. And Rog developed that, and as Eddie said, Johnny developed that. And it's not quite there with Joey yet. How could it be? You know, he's still developing his game. Do you mean an aura? Do you mean a... I do, yeah. yeah. That his body language just says to you, I'm yeah. in control. Okay. Yeah. You know, and it's not an arrogance or a no, cockiness or anything like no. that. And can he have that next to a Conor Murray? You know, Murray's the alpha male down there now, the best scrum half in the world. But Carby, will, will he have to step in toes to have that as well? I, I'd love to see that, but uh, uh, Murray is something, that he's unflappable. I've never <laughs> yeah. come across anything like him. He's uber cool yeah. on the field. Nobody gets to him. I, yeah. I don't know where he got that temperament. Like he doesn't break sweat it's out there. It's yeah. amazing, yeah. Yeah. absolutely yeah. amazing. And did you, did you think about body language as a 10? Did you think about an aura? Did I? Yeah. <laughs> No. <laughs> I was thinking about his hair. You just had that <laughs> hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that shot in the shower, yeah. <laughs> Don't come. Uh, <laughs> you felt Raj had that, obviously, then, David, playing. Yeah. I mean, so give us a sense of, when you, you know, I, I, I'm sure you would have seen games where you were thinking, God, this guy is just ordering me around and he's controlling the whole thing somehow and uh, he's making this easy on us. Can you explain that to us? Yeah, he'd always bark at me anyway in a, in a match if he thought right. I was, if I was falling asleep or something. But um, yeah, I know, he, he definitely drove the players around him um, and he took, I took on the responsibility of the, of, of the place kicking and, and you knew more often than not that he was going to get it. And, um, um, but also, look, I just, I suppose, coming through in the early stages before we even started playing regularly for Munster, we might have been playing the, you know, the A side or whatever. Um, and just the way he rifled the ball around the field and you felt like you didn't have to break sweat. Right. You know, you'd, you'd, you'd be down in their corner, you get a line up, maul it over, and then it was a try and you're, you're running back. And then he was just placing in the perfect situation at the right time, you know, as, as, as Tony said, you know, choosing the right club or, you know, he's putting up a high ball and, you know, he's, he's, he's you know, at, at the right time. Um, you know, he's looking at a, a full back out of place or whatever it is, you know. So um, he just is scanning and he's he's he's... He's, he's in the zone, as they say, you know, uh, more often than not. Learning to appreciate the needs of the forwards yeah. as well. That's something that I think so, yeah. that's what he did. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. And look, he, I'm sure he had to learn as well yeah. his, his trade, yeah. but he seemed to have an inherent amount of it, you know, coming through. Uh, obviously, had, you know, Declan Kidney as a coach coming through as well, and, and they, they worked well, I suppose, school and then into Munster. Um, and I suppose, you know, it had a good understanding in, in that. And I think Declan left, to Rod, left it to Raj in terms of, you know, having that game plan on the field as well, too, and, and trusting himself. And 